Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, hi, to the Gumming pre-release analysis. There's a lot to say about this character, but let's preface this with the, the following disclaimer. His performance will vary a lot, depending on which team you end up using for him, and which supports you have available for him, and all of that. It will also vary a lot between C0 and C6. In the worst case scenarios, even if you play him perfectly, he's pretty dog shit. And when I say worst case scenarios, I mean you're playing him at C0 with C0 Bennett or without Bennett at all, without Xianyun, that shit st starts being yikes. However, there's a lot of different building blocks that you can use to make him a lot better. And if you have all of those pieces, he's actually pretty damn good. Like not like insane while wow broken, but like pretty good. And so I would highly recommend making sure that you know which pieces you have available to you to know how well it's going to perform. From what I looked at in the worst case scenario versus in the best case scenario his damage more than triples which is a very big difference all of that being said let's get into what he does in the rest of the pre-release analysis so he has a base hp of 11,419 which is around the average maybe a bit on, a bit on the low side but not too low his defense of 703 which is a bit on the higher side which is bog base attack 302 attack percent ascension one thing though is as we're gonna see he does consume his own hp so these like arguably better than average defensive base stats don't actually mean he's more tanky than average i say that he's gonna feel about as tanky if not squishier than other carries normal attack doesn't have anything special to it his elemental skill is when start when things start getting interesting beachal ascent bounces forward using the wushu arts leaping high into the air after hitting after gumming has used the beachal ascent to rise into the air he will use the especially powerful plunging attack charmed cloud strider when performing a plunge attack so his e makes him jump and then he can plunge kind of like Kazuha. Unlike Kazuha though, he doesn't just go up when he uses it. He goes forward until he hits an enemy and then he goes up. That does somewhat limit how much control you can have over where you're jumping and can make him a bit more awkward to play, especially when you're playing him with other units that restrict you to a circle like Bennett, like Rosaria, like other such circle units. Plunge attack, charm, cloud strider. The damage from plunge attacks is converted to pyro damage that can't be overridden. And well, upon landing, he consumes a fixed amount of HP and it's plunge damage. If you look at the numbers on it, right? 391.7, it's almost as good as Deluke's plunge attack, which is the highest damage plunge attack in the game, but it does not have collision plunge. So collision plunge is what happens when you hit an enemy mid-air while you're plunging for your plunge attack. Because you'll deal damage when you land, but you can also deal damage mid-air. And especially with Claymore users, it's very easy to get this collision plunge because their hitbox is really, really big. 196, 1090. 436, 1090. If I do a low plunge, right? 436, 873, it's... It is uh, half of a low plunge that you get effectively from your from this collision plunge. That's a pretty big deal, right? Like it's a pretty large amount of damage that you're getting basically for free and that Gumming does not have. Anyways, moving on to his elemental burst, Swanee's Gilded Dance. Gumming enters the Wucho stance, uh, briefly applying Pyro to him, recovering a fixed amount of HP and summons his companion, the Swanee Manchai, and sorry for my pronunciation here, to smash into his target, dealing AOE Pyro damage. So his burst deals a bunch of damage and heals him. After that, the projectile that he that he threw, the lion, basically, Manchai, will roll to a nearby location before moving towards Gaming. When it links up with Gaming, Manchai will leave the field and your elemental skills cooldown will be reset. And while your burst is active, every time you use your elemental skill, you resummon Manchai. Effectively, he's Draven from League of Legends. He throws out a lion, and every time he catches his lion, it refreshes his elemental skill. And when he uses his skill, it throws out the lion again, and he can do that over and over. Now, he can't actually do it that quickly, right? The lion does have a decent, like a decently slow animation time. So that is something to keep in mind. You can get up to about six elemental skills in, during your burst at a baseline, but generally by the time you swap into him, well, your buffs have already spent some time and it's not worth doing all six 
mistakes, you're better off swapping after four or five. His passives, uh, essential one passive, when you hit an enemy with your skill plunge attack, restores 6% of his HP. And when he's below 50% HP, he gains healing bonus. When he's above 50% HP, he gains damage on his skill. 20% more damage. So how does this really work out? Well, you have a character who's doing relatively slow pyro attacks and therefore has fairly slow elemental application. And all of his damage is concentrated in those slow attacks. What that means is you can actually play him both in Vape and in Melt. Usually, you can't really play most of the Pyro carries in dedicated Melt teams because when you trigger Melt with a Pyro unit, you'll always wipe the aura, whereas if you're triggering Vape, you'll only wipe part of it. If I use Nevinet's E, it can let me do two Deluke E's, right? And Vape both of them. If I use Kaya E, I can only do one. So generally, when you have faster hitting pyro attacks, you can't really do meld because there's no cryo character that applies enough cryo to always reapply cryo in between your pyro hits. And once you start applying pyro on the enemy, it takes multiple hits of your cryo attacks to remove it. So it's basically Jover. It's very hard to get your cryo aura back. So because Gaming has slower hits, it does let him potentially be played in melt teams. A team that you could do with currently released units, you could do something like this with Gaming on the first slot instead of Deluke. A team like this is possible and it, it, it works out, but you're also not going to be getting that much damage out of the rest of your team. Bennett doesn't have personal damage. Setups that both Snapshot, Rosaria and Swirl Cryo tend to be kind of really scuffed and Kazuo's personal damage is fine but it's not like insane so gumming needs to have a lot of personal damage to basically make up for that and the reality is that at c0 his personal damage is a bit in my opinion a bit too low for that to be all that great but it is actually good enough at high constellation that it makes it a pretty good team so that's like the first option the second option that you have is you just go for a traditional vape team and especially with farina's release right the fact that she applies less hydro doesn't matter for Gaming because his pyro is slower and the fact that Gaming consumes his own HP and heals himself helps you gain some fanfare stacks. So you can very easily do a similar ish thing where you end up using Farina as a hydro option. Unfortunately, that was me trying to get a swirl and I f it up because my not perfect inputs and 21 ping were enough for me to not be able to get a swirl because the pyro aura disappeared too early. You can just delay your attacks a decent amount and try to figure out the right time to use Bennett's burst and stuff, but it is fairly hard for things to work out. Uh, you can also do stuff like Right, and here we got it just barely, but obviously this wouldn't wouldn't have worked properly in the AoE. It's a setup that would only really work well in single target, but this is a way you can do it. But the main thing is with Freda, because you don't have control over her Hydro, as soon as you start having to dodge or anything that will change your timings, because you can't just stop hitting with Farina, then Farina's Hydro application and therefore the, the way that the Hydro aura is going to be on the enemy, it starts being a lot more tight for your timing. And because of that, it's led to me being very cautious with the idea of assuming a pyro swirl in these teams with Farina. However, if you have been at C6, it's a lot easier. You just do the same setup at the start, but you just wait until your pyro disappears, then you hit, and then you have ample time to swap into Kazuha and get your swirl. And it works a lot better in higher ping, and overall is just a much more reliable setup that I think is probably reliable enough that I feel comfortable assuming it for anyone who like actually tries to get their setups right. So that's one of the building blocks that can make these teams better, but it's not the only thing that having Bennett C6 does, because while you're waiting for the lion to come back, you're just sitting around. And so Bennett C6 also gives you something to do in between, and you can use some of your normal attacks. And it's not going to be an insane amount of additional damage, but it'll be a little bit. Because of that, Bennett C6 by itself is actually pretty significant in any non-melt gumming teams, right? Because of the of both how much easier it makes the swirl setups and just the fact that you can gain some additional damage out of it. But if we're going to be getting some additional damage out of it like this, there is another way we can take advantage of Bennett C6. So as some of you may be aware, if you're not, go watch the Xianyun pre-release, but there is a character coming out in the same patch as him, Xianyun, who 
is a plunge buffer and who lets you like jump higher and buffs your plunge attack. And she works quite well with Gami because she buffs his elemental skill plunge attacks, but also she makes it so that instead of just doing normal attacks while waiting for your line to come back, you can do more plunge attacks, just the normal ones instead of the skill ones. And you might be thinking, okay, but the normal plunge is 294 versus almost 400. So it has to do a lot less damage, right? But there's collision plunge. And while yeah, the collision plunge cannot trigger reactions, unlike the plunge damage itself. So you're only vaping part of your damage rather than all of it. It's still a significant amount of damage. And it basically leads to his normal plunge attack without his skill. If you don't have constellations to increase his skill damage, being about as good as his skill plunge attacks. On top of that, they're a lot easier to control, so they might actually just be better. Now, you might be wondering, okay, how many of them do you get? From what I've seen, I think you burst into E rather than E into burst, and that way it lets you do two E's in quick succession because the lion you throw from your first E or from your burst, you don't catch it until you've used your first E, so you effectively get your second E refreshed very easily, which lets you do in these teams where you have have to spend some of your Bennett uptime on Kazuha to get your swirl. I've been assuming four elemental skills. And then with Bennett C6 and Xianyun, you basically get an additional two plunge attacks for free. Xianyun doesn't only help his vape teams though, because while a pretty significant portion of what she does is letting you jump higher so you can plunge, she also just gives your plunges more damage, which makes her a viable and arguably better option than even a unit like Kazuha, even in those melt teams. Even though you're not gaining the ability to do more plunges because you're still kind of gated by the speed of your cryo application, it is still something that you can do and it's still pretty good. And then obviously the final important building block for his teams is his constellations. His C1 helps him be a bit more HP positive, lets him get away without Bennett a little bit more easily, but I think that all of his good teams will use Bennett, honestly. It helps him heal a little bit more whenever he catches his lion. His C2 gives him attack whenever he overheals, which is going to happen very easily if you're using either Bennett or Shanyun. His C3 increases his skill damage by three, and that's relatively significant. It's a bit less significant in those vape teams because rather than increasing 80% of your damage, the part that's coming from your skill, it's increasing like 60% of your damage because you have some damage coming from your plunge attacks instead. But it is still pretty good even in those teams. Oscillation 4, whenever your skill plunge attack hits an opponent, it will restore two energy to Gaming. This effect can be triggered once every 0.2 seconds. This thing is, I guess, a good segue to talk about his ER. And his ER is potentially rough. There's a lot of teams where you end up losing a little bit of buff up time in order to set up more buffs. And when you do that, it starts becoming harder to do five E's. If you do five E's, your last E will probably be unbuffed, which is a DPS loss. But it might be worth doing it anyways, just because you need the ER. So let's talk about, about his ER requirements. Uh, his elemental skill generates two particles, but it has ICD, like it has particle generation ICD. So effectively you'll only generate particles every other skill rather than every skill. So if you get three sets of particle generations, two sets of Bennett E's, Farina, maybe you catch five of those, Cloud Retainer, another five, Clear, two, Caught, three non-caught, because Farina's on five. ER requirements are around 135. Worst case scenario, you don't you do one less E, maybe you killed the enemy and had to walk to the next one, and because of that, you lost a little bit of uptime. Like there's a lot of things that can lead to characters that generate particles over time like this on cast to making them generate a bit less particles in some situations. Just that is like over 20 more ER that you'd need if you want to always be ready for that. One less Bennett E and one less E on him as well. Your ER cards go from 140 to 180. That's a pretty big difference. I'd say that the average case is relatively close to the best case. I think a lot of people are just not going to do their Bennett E's properly. So I, I think I would probably recommend getting around 150 to be comfortable. But if you remember to do your Bennett E's during your downtime, Time, then 140 will be fine. Then obviously if you have the C4, that's two energy, happens five times, so that's 10 energy. His ER goes to 50, his cost. It makes him go from around 140 to around 115 ER. Point being here, there can be a lot of variation in what your ER requirements are gonna be. I guess I didn't actually look at if you're playing a team with Rosaria instead. If you're playing a team with Rosaria better, worst case scenario, and then the ER requirements start to shoot the f 
God. Generally, his error requirements aren't too high, but there are quite a few things that can go wrong to make his error requirements go up. Next, Constellation 5. Burst talent levels, they're fine, but not insane. And then C6 is obviously his best constellation. It gives he it gives him 80 crit value on his elemental skill. For context, I looked at his personal damage in a few different team iterations. If you are C0, C6 Bennett, no Xianyun. His best team is between the Farina and the Rosaria team. I would probably lean towards the Farina team where he'll get a little bit less personal damage but the team overall will be better but the Rosera team is still fine. That being said neither of those teams are all that insane. At C0 with Kazuha without Ben at C6 the comparison between the units is somewhat similar, but because the Pyro Swirl is harder to do with the team with Farina than in the team with Rosaria, then it will help the team with Rosaria a lot more. And I think at that point, the team with Rosaria is probably slightly better. That being said, I don't think any of those teams are actually particularly good. Now, if he's C0 and you have Xian Yun and Ben at C6, then I would say that his best team is the Farina team. And if you don't have Ben at C6, it's it's probably still the Rosario team and it does make that team a little bit stronger. And then finally, if he is at C6, his best team is going to be with Xian Yun, Farina, but the Rosaria team will also not be bad. It will also be fairly good. Uh, and I would say that Xian Yun, Rosaria is probably the best melt team, but Kazuha Rosaria is also relatively similar. All in all, if you don't have constellations on Bennett, don't end up getting constellations on him and don't get Xian Yun, I don't think he's a very good unit and it might be very unpleasant to try to force him. But if you either have Bennett C6 and or Xian Yun, and or constellations on him, he can actually be a pretty good unit. Does that mean that you're completely if you don't have those surrounding pieces and you want to play him? Not necessarily, it just means that those teams where he's really shining, where he's the main source of damage in the team, are maybe not the best ones. Other teams where he can be all right will obviously be Mono Pyro. You can use Yelan or Singto instead of Farina in his carry teams, and they'll still be good, but specifically for him, because he doesn't need that faster hydro, the Farina team should perform better. You can also obviously play him in a, in a Chevreuse team, although I think it's going to be kind of rough dealing with his knockback plus overload knockback in a lot of situations, but that is definitely something you can do. Other than that, I mean, you can try to force him in a Burgeon team. I don't think he synergizes with Burgeon very well, but if you just really want to play him in that, then it's, it, it can work. Either way, let's move on to the usual stuff we do for the pre-release. Although I guess we already did some some talk about the teams, so we might as well do that first. So obviously for the teams, you have his like vape, good, melt, good asterisk. I think it's generally worse than vape, but it is something you can do if you don't have Farina. It can actually be better than the vape teams without Farina. But again, right, it's a lot harder to make these teams work if you don't have any of the surrounding pieces because he himself just doesn't do quite as much, right? C0, no Xianya, like his damage is not the greatest. Mono Pyro, he's all right. Burgeon, eh. Chevreuse. All right, that's kind of it, really. All right, let's move on to the weapons. First, we can talk about the crit five-star swords, and unironically, the crit five-star swords are not his best in slot weapons. You might be thinking, okay, but why? And I do want to put like a caveat to that. If you don't end up going for Xian Yun, if you play him with Kazuha, then the crit five stars are his best options. But if you do go for Xian Yun, then you have a decent amount of your damage that is coming from motion value that doesn't look at his attack, but rather at Xian Yun's attack, which makes his attack stat a lot less relevant, and therefore the higher base attack from five star weapons also a lot less relevant, and which makes all the other stats that are actually affecting this part of damage coming from Xian Yun a lot more relevant. So a best in slot without Xian Yun. But because of that damage coming from Xian Yun, damage percent multiplies that additional motion value. Crit also does. And elemental mastery, when you're reacting on those plunges, also does. And the reality is that all three of our crit weapons either provide something that is completely useless in the passive, like the Red Horn Stone Thresher, because he's not really doing normal charge attack, and this doesn't apply to plunge attacks. The passive is completely useless, so all you have is 88 crit damage and relatively high base attack, which is still good, but it matters a lot less. 
You have bacon, which gives you attack percent. And then on top of that, from what I understand, he cannot trigger this because none of his elemental skill is both an elemental skill and a hit. His skill doesn't deal damage itself, so he doesn't actually like hit enemies. And then what you do after that is a plunge attack, not a skill. So he can't actually trigger this first part from what I understand. Now it is possible that this is wrong. It's possible that they make an exception for him. It's possible that I'm just misunderstanding how it works. And if that's the case, then Bacon should be slightly better than what I've found to be the best option so far, but not by much. It's still very close. And on top of that, after the character takes damage, it doesn't work on his self damage. It only works on like when you take damage because it consumes HP, it doesn't damage him like Dea does. So you can't get the first one and you can only get a part of the second one, which makes the passive pretty bad. And then Verdict. Uh, Verdict, it just gives you attack percent and then something on Crystallize, but you don't really trigger Crystallize. You could play him with a Geo unit, but then you're losing a lot of damage. So all in all, none of these three weapons are actually that great. But something that actually does provide stats that he cares about a lot is Serpent Spine. Serpent Spine provides up to 50% damage percent at R5 on top of over 50 crit value. When you are playing him with Xianyan, it's just his straight up best in slot. It is better than the five star options if you are stacking it. If you don't want to have to stack it before you start a chamber, then it's going to be slightly better to go for one of the five stars. But like, yeah, even at R1, it's pretty competitive with those five star weapons. It's about as good. And so because of that, Serpent Spine is going to be his number one. That being said, Serpent Spine is a battle pass only weapon, so you can't get it if you're free to play. So what other options does he have that are pretty good? Unironically, Rain Slasher is a pretty good weapon on him. It obviously is not particularly good if you're playing him in Melt Teams because enemies will not be affected by Hydro or Electro. But if you're playing him in Vape Teams, they will be affected by Hydro. And Elemental Mastery is a lot better than Attack for him when you're playing him with Xian Yun because Elemental Mastery applies to the part of his damage that is is Xian Yun. And so therefore, Rain Slasher is actually generally his best four star option. His best free to play four star option. Because it's not like guaranteed free to play, but it's like the best four star option you can get as a free to play. If it's low refine, it's a lot closer to the other weapons. But if it's high refine, it is actually ahead of them. You have Lithic, which I just want to quickly talk about. Lithic is not particularly good on him because a lot of what it gives is attack percent and because there's just not that many teams where you're playing him with multiple other Leia units. You're playing him with Xian Yun in a lot of his teams, but that's kind of it. And so it makes it generally worse than the other options. But if for some reason you are playing specifically a team that, I mean, I, mean, I don't know, you're playing him in Mono Pyro with Xian Yun, Xian Lei, and you have three Leia units, then that's pretty good. But overall, it's it's generally not the greatest. Next, that leaves us with, I guess I want to quickly talk about Skyward. I also won't put it in here. Skyward is also a fine option, but it's not great. So it's really just about these three remaining options for the free to play options. You have the craftable, the event weapon for the event that we just got, and an event weapon from an event a few patches ago. And generally, Mailflower will be the best of these three options. Again, because of that damage, of that part of his damage that is coming from Xiang Yun, right? And just when I say that, what I mean is Xian Yun has a very similar effect to Shen he on plunge attacks that increases plunge attack damage. And this looks at her attack, but at their damage percent and crit and elemental mastery if it's reacting. And because Meld Flower gives you a lot of EM, it is generally the best in slot free to play. However, the Meluzine sword from the very recent event is very close second when you're playing him in teams where you do not have his constellation four. When you do have his constellation four, his ER requirements go down enough that the energy recharge you gain from that Meluzine sword. And again, right, the, its actual name is not the Meluzine sword. It's the ultimate overlords mega magic sword, but whatever. This gives you 30 ER, which is very useful at low constellation because you do have ER requirements. A high constellation in the right situations, you don't necessarily need that much ER. And so therefore, you'd rather be able to use a weapon that doesn't give you ER. But at the very least, before C4, it's honestly about as good as Mailed Flower, just because of the sheer amount of stats that you get, even if it's the, the stats that you get are not necessarily as good. And then finally, you have Tidal Shadow, which also gives you a lot of stats, but they're not the perfect stat for him because, again, his attack matters a bit less than his damage, crit, and EM, and it is attack substat and attack passive, but it's still a fine option. And one thing that I've noticed is when you are playing him with Xian Yun, the damage difference between his worst weapon out of the one 
ones I looked at. Obviously, I didn't look at shit like the bell, right? But like out of the weapons that actually give him stats he cares about, including free to play, including everything, right? The difference between his very worst weapon and his very best weapon within those is like 20%, which is usually the difference between the best free to play and the signature. It's very low. And that effectively means that you can kind of get away with almost any weapon on him because none of them particularly stands out from the others. And most of those weapons are within 10%. And if you're not assuming that you fully stack Serpent Spine, all of those weapons are within like 15%. It's it's a very, very close distribution. If you're not playing with Xianyan, the distribution goes up a little bit more because obviously these five star weapons giving you higher base attacks starts mattering a bit more. But the actual order is still fairly similar. You just have the five star options being a little bit higher. And then all of these weapons that give attack being a little bit higher as well, but they wouldn't change in ways that are actually all that meaningfully different. Fav, just use this in Overworld. He's not gonna feel good in Overworld if you're not using Fav, I can tell you that right now. Next, artifact stats. Now, for the same reason why the attack focused weapons and the high base attack weapons don't have quite as much value, the artifacts that give you attack also have a bit less value. A lot of his damage, again, if you're playing here with Xiang Yun, doesn't care about his attack and therefore you'd rather have other different stats. That makes it so that generally his best build is going to be EM pyro crit rather than attack pyro crit. That being said, again, if you don't have Xiang Yun and you end up playing him with Kazuha or any other animal unit or fuck, if you end up playing him in a non a, no, a team that doesn't use a, uh, an animal unit or in a team where you don't react with him, then his best build would be attack viral crit. Finally, artifact sets. I mean, he consumes his own HP. You know what that means, right? It means Marichal C. I will say though, Vermilion is not a terrible set on him because he does open his rotations with bursts. But again, it gives you a lot of attack, which if you're playing with Xian Yun is not necessarily what you want. But if you're not playing with Xian Yun, Vermilion is actually pretty okay. And if you're playing in a team that's like double Hydro without external attack buffs or Xian Yun, then Vermilion can actually pull out ahead a little bit. Some of you guys might be tempted to go for Crimson Witch of Flames, but the reality is that Crimson Witch of Flames is just not good enough. It's just not better than Marichose, and that's really all that needs to be said, unfortunately. One thing though, specifically if you are using Serpent Spine, that's 27.6% crit rate. Marichose, that's another 36, and you start with 5. So that's already 67% crit. And then if you have his C6, that's another 20% crit. So you're already starting almost at 90% crit, and if you have a decent amount of crit rate substats, then you're gonna overcap on crit rate, and it can make it so that either you'd rather be using a crit damage weapon, so the five star crit swords would actually potentially overtake Serpent Spine, or just straight up Rain Slasher, or it could make it so that you wanna ditch the Marichal save for another set like Vermilion or Crimson Witch. So I guess I should add Crimson Witch just, just in case for that situation. But again, and you're gonna take a while to actually fully stack your Crimson Witch, so a lot of your damage is not gonna have Crimson Witch stacks, so it's not actually that great, but it is fine. Yeah, all right, I forgot. Xianyun also gives you a little bit of crit rate on your plunge attacks if you're using her, at least 4%, so yeah. It, it, it can be very easy to max out your crit if you get a C6. But yeah, that basically does it for him. Uh, overall, again, right, there's a pretty big difference between his performance and his worst teams and his best teams, and even in those teams, be, like literally just being the same team, Team, just from having constellations on him and or on Bennett can make a huge difference. For reference, with the assumption that you don't manage to get the swirl if you don't have C6 Bennett, the exact same team with Bennett, Xianyun, Farina is almost three times more damage out of gumming. It's about 2.6 if you just have Bennett C6 and his C6 versus if you have both of those at C0. That's why it's, like, it's so hard for me to like properly express what I think about him because there's just so much variance in his power, even within the same team, just based on what four-star constellations you have to an extent that like he'll feel almost unplayable if you don't have any of the things going for it for him and if he'll feel great if you do but yeah all this to say if you do decide to get him from lantern right because you can get him for free and you don't have any of the things surrounding him don't expect him to be very good he's not really going to be very good but if you do have the pieces surrounding him he can actually be quite strong i guess one last piece of like quote unquote warning before you decide to go for him if you do have c6 bennett is that from what i've looked at his teams like his better teams they're 
they're good, but they're not as good as using Bennett as your carry and adding a second hydro support. At the end of the day, you're not getting him and his C6 to improve your team. You're getting him and his C6 to change how the team is played and maybe free up your Sing So for, for the other side or your Yelan for the other side. And yeah, I guess I should also compare him to, to Deluke. Generally, he's going to be a bit worse at C0 than Deluke is. But then there's also the fact that Deluke generates less energy for the rest of your team, which can actually make it hard to potentially reach the ER requirements you need on your other teammates to even get their burst, right? It's not a question of you lose damage to build ER. It's a question of your ER requirements are so high that it's hard to even have artifacts that have enough ER. But if you do manage to get that ER, Deluke should perform better generally than he does. That being said, once you start getting constellations on him, he will outperform Deluke. And I'm saying that I realize that Deluke is not very good right now. Deluke will be a lot better with Xianyun. And so him being a bit worse than Deluke at C0 isn't him being dog shit. Deluke is just going to get a lot better. If you already have a Deluke and you want to get a different character from Lantern, right? Instead of him, but you're torn because you feel like you could use a carry like him. It's probably not worth going for. Anyways, all right, that's going to be it for the coming pre-release for the first time in a long time. I actually remembered to do the constellations before finishing the recording <laughs> because they kind of matter a lot more. I think four star constellations tend to be a lot more relevant. It's been a while since I did a pre an actual pre-release on a four star, but Gumming's kit is interesting enough that I wanted to. So let me know if you guys would like to see more of those pre-releases on four stars. I'll leave you with the fact that his animations are like, they're very, very beautifully done. He looks amazing while he's using his abilities. And that might be enough for people to go for him and build him regardless of how good he actually is. So I'm pretty glad that there are situations where he's pretty good. I'm looking forward to him. I think he's going to be a lot of fun to play. I'll be testing him on day one. So make sure you stop by on the Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash zjeff77. Do all the good YouTube stuff subscribe, all that, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, YouTube.